Hello everybody and welcome to this week's uh, developer update. Um, my name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. First of all, as always, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank, thank you to all of the people that fund my development work. Uh, they literally make it possible for me to spend time working on Inkscape um, that I just wouldn't have if, if they didn't help. Um, so thank you all so much. If you'd like to join, join them, uh, links are in the description. Uh, so first of all, we have uh, fixes for crashes, which is something everybody likes. There's various memory leaks that were happening within the pages tool, toolbar uh, and a couple of di dialogue uh, crash fi fi fixes. Those are relatively simple things. And as the um, Inkscape release continues, there'll be more hopefully crash fi fixes so that Inkscape doesn't crash. That's the goal really is that Inkscape doesn't crash. Um, we have a smoothing pencil fix. Now this is actually a really small code change, but it required a bit of investigation. So I found a Twitter user who was quite distressed about how difficult Inkscape 1.0 and later was to use with the pen pencil. And this is because there was a change in introduced uh, a number of years ago, which looks like an accidental change, which changed how aggressive the, the, the smoothing is. And in fact, the smoothing setting was set to 50 times more powerful than it was before. Um, investigating the history of the code and like who changed it and why they did and what the work they were trying to achieve was when they did it. Um, the resulting code change is actually just putting back the uh, divide by 50 effectively. Um, so that when you introduce smoothing, you, you know, when you turn down the smooth smoothing, you actually don't get this situation where it's just always super aggressively smoothing every pencil stroke that you make. Um, the Twitter user actually helped me test it, so I know that it, it, it does achieve uh, the vast majority of what the user want, wanted to. The, the big thing this week is uh, I've been trying to get the extensions manager and the clip art importer um, built into Inkscape itself. We've been shipping the extensions manager uh, using a bootstrap, and then you could use the extensions manager to install the, the importer, the clip art importer. Um, but it's time to uh, bundle those into Inkscape. Both of them are graphical user interfaces, right? So you load the, the extension and instead of the vast, vast majority of extensions where it goes away and it runs like a command line and then it comes back to you. These are graphical user interfaces which pop up a wind window which you can do things in and then when you exit the window, that's when it goes back to Inkscape. Um, there is no formal graphical user interface API in the extensions, uh, you know, module that we ship. So I had to make one and I was using a, an old mo module that I wrote many years ago called GTK me and effectively is a lot of code refactoring. And one of the things we want to do for the extensions repository is make sure that it's very well te tested, high quality code, much more so than like it ever used to be. And to maintain that means I had to investigate how to, um, test graphic user interfaces, make sure that CI build, build builders could actually like run tests appropriately, uh, make sure requirements were well documented because when you're doing graphical stuff, there's a lot more dependencies. Um, and then just a lot of code hacking. So a lot of Python is what I've been doing this week, especially writing tests, um, you know, just trying to make sure that all of the features that I want to have are tested. And then all of the features that I don't want to test, I remove. So there was a couple of things that GTK me uh, has that I, I didn't want to I didn't want to include at least not yet, and I also renamed it so that it's not the same module. It's now available as inkx.gui. Um, you know, it's still a GTK interface, um, but hopefully it allows extension authors to write graphic user interfaces in a more simple and straightforward way than if they were using just GTK directly. Um, so that's most of my work this week. I wish I could show you more like a visually stunning uh, set of fe feature. You're going to have to take, take it on trust. I think that this is an awesome feature. This week in Inkscape other news, um, this is a bunch of Inkscape work that I didn't do. Uh, we have uh, intern James who fixed a, a text on path crash. Uh, this is a mo the most ridiculous situation where 
uh, say for instance you have a textile path and you I don't know why you would do this but you use the undo fun functionality um, the undo functionality would literally break the text on path and any action that you then subsequently did to the text on path would crash Inkscape. Um, such a ridiculously easy thing to do. Um, and he managed to fix that, which is great. Um, it also managed to fix a bunch of other things at the same, at the same time. Uh, Mike has released his uh, SVG font, uh, font editor fi fix fixes. This is a special dialogue for editing fonts. And he's done a bunch of other fixes and great and um, UI improve, improvements. He's been working with Adam, who is next, uh, to change the default theme colors and I icons. So now that Inkscape doesn't ship with the classic theme by, by, by default, it'll ship with the more um, more modern theme. And they implemented uh, grid and guide default colors. So that instead of it being verdant blue, it's uh, it's a lighter shade of semi-transparent blue, you know, a slightly greeny color, uh, which actually looks really nice. Those are just de defaults though, don't, don't forget. They can always be changed. Uh, Thomas fixed a clip clipboard I issue with cloned elements and uh, Latin keyboard shot shortcuts, which I think is a Windows bug where shortcut shortcuts did not correctly identify themselves if we, you were using a non-QWERTY key keyboard. Um, Raphael, um, implemented preventing uh, locked layers and locked objects from moving w when you moved pages around. Um, we had a discussion about the user interface for that, like whether it was appropriate to lock objects or not. Um, he fixed the redo and undo buttons in the main tool toolbar. And uh, he fixed the multiple bugs in the in the cutout from shapes mode in the eraser tool. And in fact, I believe most of his work has been in fixing the, the eraser tool problems. Uh, Mark has been busy just keeping things running, uh, fixing Windows builds, and Javier has been uh, continuing so many fixes in the in the live path effects. Um, speed improve improvements, selection improvements, um, numerous crashes. So uh, yeah, th there's a bunch of work going on otherwise, but I won't tell you about it until it's merged in, because um, it, otherwise this would be long and it wouldn't be as concrete. Um, so keep wa watching these vid videos if you want to hear about some, some of the work going on. And um, thank you all for jo joining me this week. Uh, I hope you will come back next week.